Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. Hope you're happy, healthy and well. It is time for a new book review today. In these, this video, what I usually do is I share my own little life lessons as well that I get out of the books that I read. The book I want to talk about today is Anita Bruckner's third novel called Look At Me. Every time I <laughs> see that look at me, I think of something else <laughs> of Kath and Kim. Look At Me was Anita Bruckner's third novel and if you have been following this channel for some time you do realize that Anita Bruckner is my female crush, my favorite female author. I love 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 her books because her books are all quite relevant of the time and they, they talk about situations and themes that we all know about. The themes of solitude, of loneliness, of life not going as we had planned, bad parenting, of failed dreams, making sacrifices. So all these themes are still quite relevant. But what she does is I feel as if she does all these permutations and combinations of situations that have happened in her own life that are portrayed in her characters. Anita Bruckner was born in the 1920s, 1928. She was a very good art historian. She was a professor and she was lecture in art history. And so that was her entire career. But when she retired, she just decided, hey, at 53, I'm gonna write a book because I'm gonna stay inside. I don't like being out there in the summer. So I'm going to write a novel during my summer holidays and that's what she did. She wrote A Start in Life which I had reviewed in this channel. The fascinating thing about Bruckner is that when she writes her novels she just writes them like she writes them like that. There's no drafting, there's no planning. They they come out perfect. She tweaks them here and there she said. What you see is basically what she had written first first draft and that to me is amazing because the way she writes it's brilliant. It's scathing at times, it's funny, it's, it hits, it hits so hard. So I think Anita Bruckner is someone that everyone should read and let me know what you think about her novel. Look at Me, as I mentioned, was her third novel. It was written in 1983 and it is about a lady by the name of Frances Hinton and Frances hates to be called Fanny. Frances archives these images and catalogues these images that in the medical institute library that she works at. And in the library, there's Olivia, who's a very good friend of hers. And Olivia comes from a very good family that Frances is always invited back to and she enjoys going. There are a couple of other characters in the library. And you could see all those characters who just keep coming back day in, day out. They're also lonely people. I thought was kind of like a metaphor of being in this world where out there, it's all the crazy people out there you can never be part of. Out there, there's more exciting things happening and yet somehow you're not part of that excitement. So the, the library was an environment where these dull routine characters would sit here and actually have their own world. Now, in this world comes, breezes in, young doctor, good looking, good clothes, good health, and everyone falls themselves, falls over backwards trying to help him find things in the library. They do stuff for him, even though <laughs> even though he could, he's perfectly capable of doing it himself. Francis looks at Nick and says, you know, isn't it amazing that beautiful people are just entire, a world unto themselves. They are people you can never be part of. They are people that we all look at, we will observe. She says of them, and this is her quote, extremely handsome men and extremely beautiful women exercise a power over others which they themselves have no need or indeed time to analyze. They attract followers, admirers, adherents, and people like me, observers. One is never totally at ease with such people for they are like sovereigns and one's duty is to defer to them. That's what she thinks about beautiful people. And in the past, also I myself, especially as a young person, would want to be part of a clicky group, would want to be part of that in crowd. And we see it nowadays in also online where we want to be part of groups or you know we don't want to be on the outer. She also talks about beautiful people, about what impressed me about them was not only their breadth of view, but the fact that their lives contain no element of routine. 
they answer only invitations go anywhere and do anything i thought them brave now dr nick has this beautiful wife called alex and it's all about alex you can imagine her with her beautiful clothes her beautiful hair her cigarettes on cigarette holders and she holds court with everyone around her who fawns after her For, to francis she wants to be part of that crowd and she can never be but she also learned that she is never to criticize because nick and alex were extraordinarily sensitive to criticism i keep thinking of this word extraordinarily she keeps saying it but in our head she's evoking this this picture that we've all been in this situation where we are observers to another life or to other people where we want to be part of that and we're not now what happens is nick and alex start to invite francis and they start calling her fanny which she hates but she doesn't say anything and that in itself is also something that a lot of people would do if they want to be part of the in crowd they'll just anything that they hate they'll keep quiet because they don't want to stir the waters. So she gets invited to their house, but she's always a third wheel. She feels like a third wheel. And I always feel whenever I'm reading about Francis in with this, this couple, I always feel that Francis, can you not see that you do not have a place here with these people? You are your own person. You are delightfully your own person, but she's still uncomfortable in herself that she thinks that she needs to be part of this crowd in order to be someone. She is aware at least, Frances is aware at least that if she decides to go and be part of this crowd and to dine with them and to find another person to be a, a couple with them, which is what they want, she needs to make a sacrifice. And given that she's writing a book, and that she values her solitude because she sees characters for who they are. To her, the world, people that she could write about as characters in her books. If she makes a choice to go with the life of Nick and Alex and to hang out with them and to even go and live with them as they are asking her to do, to move into their spare room, that would mean it would be a sacrifice of her not being able to write. And so there's always some kind of delay with Frances and you can see as you read it that she's got her thinking right. She there's a part of Francis that you go, yes, stick with it, Francis. Make sure that comes out. You know, we want Francis to come out. We want Francis to actually stand up to these idiotic, beautiful people and actually tell them how what it is and how it's like. But of course, she doesn't do that. She's the sensible young woman. She's the sensible woman who everyone wants her to, to do their work. She's the one who goes and visits Mrs. Morpeth every Sunday afternoon, even though she hates because she's a sensible woman and sensible women do this for others. They are of service to other people. She resents this at the same time, simply because she feels that in her life, she should have been married. She should have been part of a couple. She should have been part of this exciting life that a males and females have together. And I'm saying that obviously for the time of period that it was written. So she's seeing that and she's saying that she can never be a part of it. She'll always be an observer and yet she wants it. And yet at the same time, she also wants her own life and to make the choices of living a life that she wants and not society's expectations. So these are the themes that are constantly in Anita Bruckner's novels are all about, I guess, the different permutations and combinations of Anita Bruckner's own life but I find it fascinating that each time I read her novel I'm ex immersed into it straight away and there's always some part of the novel where the knife goes in something changes and I have an audible sigh that just just goes Ugh! just like that when I read it because I know shit she has to make a choice here. The themes in this book are all about solitude, loneliness, beautiful people, of being an observer in life, of never being part of and wanting to and desiring to be part of a group of, of people who seem to have more exciting lives than what we do. And yet I also feel that there is a strength of character in her books, in all her female characters 
who do make the choice, who go against the society norms and society ex expectations and don't apologize, but they quietly do this uh, for themselves. Some part of the book also can be akin to life nowadays of being ghosted. Nowadays, we can be ghosted online quite easily, but what about being ghosted in person with people around you, of people that you have been part of, of people who have invited you into their crowd, into their scene, and then at the same time would play off other characters to each other against you and then cut you off quite suddenly. This theme also in the book of ghosting is uh, very relevant. Now, she doesn't call the word ghosting, but a lot of us, a lot of people I'm sure, would have experienced that same situation happen to them, not only in just online, but also in uh, groups. But all she wants, all the protagonist wants, is the ability to be able to be seen, to be heard, to have wants, be visible to people, because she feels that her dull and routine life is not that. She says, I'm tired of being serviceable and sensible, and I begin to res resent this call on my time. She talks about growing old alone. She says, if I'm not careful, I shall grow into the most awful old battle axe. And I had to chuckle at that because I thought to myself, <laughs> I used to think this to myself. Sorry about that. There was some banging inside and I thought I have to go and investigate. It turned out that there was a minor bird in the house. It was flying all around trying to escape and banging into the windows. Anyway, it's all sorted now. I got a towel, I've draped it over the bird and he escaped and he's free now outside and being vermin to uh, the outside world. So this is all I have to say about Anita Bruckner's novel look at me i would highly recommend this book i think i'm going to buy this book and actually give it as gifts to friends of mine other women as well who would i know love it as much as i did let me know what you think have you read any of anita bruckner's books what do you think of her books? Do you think that they are still relevant today? What books have you read of hers? And what book would you recommend after I read, read this one? Part of me wants to take a break from Bruckner. It's just that every time I read her books, I'm so invested, they're so beautiful and yet so sad because she has to make a choice. <sighs> And they're books that I keep thinking long afterwards. I think she's a brilliant author. And I think everyone should read Anita Bruckner. Anyway, that is it for me. Thank you for listening. And thank you for watching. Bye for now.